The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome to Midday with Greg. This is part of our outreach ministry here at St. George's, the Anglican Parish in the Blue Mountains. Our service can be found daily on our YouTube channel, the Anglican Parish in the Blue Mountains. Thank you for your support. Feel free to subscribe. Our service today is a service of morning prayer that comes as authorized by the Anglican General Synod in the Anglican Church of Canada. Let us have a moment of silence before we come together in worship. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the loving reign of the risen Christ. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Today is Tuesday, May 12th, and on this day, the Anglican Communion uh, commemorates Florence Nightingale. So I'd like to start our service by sharing a little bit about uh, the history of Florence Nightingale as has been documented in the text for all the saints published by the Anglican Church of Canada. We remember Florence Nightingale chiefly for her work during the Crimean War, which took place between 1854 and 1856. Hearing the voice of God and animated by the spirit of service, Florence Nightingale organized the first modern nursing service in the British field hospitals at Scutari and Balaclava. Now, in the midst of appalling conditions, she was tireless in her efforts to relieve the suffering of those who were wounded and those soldiers who were dying. Her solitary vigils in the hospital wards led the popular press to call her the Lady of the Lamp and the Angel of Scutari. Within four years of her return from Crimea, Nightingale's health broke down. And eventually, she became housebound as an invalid. But she continued to influence public policy, and her labors helped to disperse the age-old prejudice against nurses, and she gave their profession high respectability. Her example also helped to liberate middle-class women from their subor subordinate and passive roles within society. By the time of her death, at the age of 90, her reputation had assumed mythological proportions, and on this day, she is still honored as the founder of the modern profession of nursing. So on this day, join with me as we honor and commemorate the life and the faith and the ministry of Florence Nightingale together as we pray. Living God, you alone have the power over life and death. Give power, wisdom, and gentleness to those who follow the lead of Florence Nightingale, that they, bearing with them your presence, may not only heal, but bless others, and shine as lanterns of hope in the darkest hours of pain and fear. Through Jesus Christ, who is the healer of body and soul, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And adding on to this prayer, let us offer up a prayer for all those first responders who are nurses and health care givers, doctors, and those who support in any way. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for all the members of your body that reach out through health and healing for the members of our community and beyond. Today, as we honor Florence Nightingale, so too may we honor all those whose profession calls them to care for others, to offer up health and treatment for those who are sick, and to offer comfort for those who are dying. All this we pray through the gentle mercy of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, allow me to share some readings with you today. Our first reading comes from the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 6, beginning at the 6th verse. The theme of what God requires. With what shall I come before the Lord, 
and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've always felt that this passage gets to the very heart of my feelings of inadequacy. Whenever I think of all the ways that I can honor God in my own life, and then the reality of what I end up actually offering up to God on a day-to-day -day basis. It's never helpful to compare ourselves to others in terms, in terms of faithfulness and commitment. There will always be another person who's more faithful than I am, another person who's more devoted in prayer, another who may be more honest to God, another more active in acts of kindness and generosity. Yet the truth of this passage is found in the statement that God calls us to always be ourselves. Not to seek to compare ourselves to others, for faith is not a contest of piety, or of sacrifice, or of material possessions, or even of groveling in our unworthiness before God. What God asks us in faith is simple to do justice with the extent of our lives and our influence, to love kindness as expressed by our own actions in the ways that we are to care for others, and to do both of these things humbly in our faith, not for the purposes of seeking recognition from others, because God notices all that we do and all that we are, but instead knowing that God sees through our insecurities to call us always to be authentic to ourselves. So whenever I'm feeling insecure or unworthy, I try to recall this passage. Be yourself, seek justice and kindness, walk humbly with God, and I find that this reminder always makes things easier for me along the way. May this be so for you in your own journeys of faith. Amen. Now, as we respond to this passage today, let us offer these words of a responsory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of all those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Now, the second reading that I have to share with you today is uh, from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning at verse 31. The Judgment of the Nations. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and with all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then he will, the king will say to those at his right hand, Come to you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. When I was in prison, you came and you visited me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that you were sick were in prison, and we came to visit you. And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is the gospel of Christ. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Love God, love your neighbors. Two commandments given by Jesus that are all about relationships. What is undeniable about the teachings of Jesus is God's understanding of the interconnectedness of human life. Faith without relationships is nothing but meaningless in God's sight. The passage that we just shared together today reveals a glimpse in what Christians refer to as kingdom values, the meaning, meaningful markers of faithfulness as expressed by the will of God in our lives. What does God expect of us when we are called before him as our lives are reviewed and our acts of faithfulness are presented before the Almighty? Well, we hear this. God expects the small and the simple things, a caring of strangers, of neighbors, of those who may be different than we are, a generosity that allows us to reflect on the blessings that we own and have for the purpose of sharing them with those that go with fewer blessings, a desire to reach beyond our own need to be affirmed so that we may affirm and comfort others. A sense of responsibility towards the sick, the imprisoned, and the lonely, which is really a sense of communal responsibility. Any Christian's faith who is absent of these virtues, these kingdom characteristics, is not held as a valuable faith in God's sight. Again, whenever we seek out God's guidance in the ways of faithfulness, God always seems to reorient us again and again. He leads us back into relationship. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. That is all. May our efforts at living this out be pleasing in God's sight, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith as found in Christ's two commandments, as we say, the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us now enter into a time of prayer for the community. When I say, Redeemer of Israel, please join with me in saying, hear our prayer. Let us offer our intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings to Almighty God as we say, Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May we live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross, by living out the virtues of generosity, hope, and compassion for others. Redeemer of Israel, Hear our prayer. May all people receive the good news of Christ's love and salvation. May we pray for the continued outreach and care of all Christian denominations and congregations. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May those who have been born into the new life through the waters of baptism know the power of Christ's resurrection. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. Let us pray at this time for all those who suffer pain and anguish. I invite you in the silence to remember those who may be close to you, either silently or out loud. We pray that they may know the power and the healing peace that is found through the compassion of Jesus. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. Please join with me as we remember today members of our St. George's Parish family. Today we remember uh, Rob and Michelle Fleming. We pray for Grant and Marina Forsyth, for Jill Gamble and her son Chad, for Don Gower, and for Doris Heffern. Let us pray for Derek and Sue Goodhand, for Gwyneth Green, 
and for Denise and Rod Goats. Let us pray as well for their families and all those they love and care for this day and always. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May we be united in Christ's undying love with all who have passed through the gates of death. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. God of life, you sent your Son into the world that we may live through him. May we abide in his risen life so that we may bear the fruit of love for one another and know the fullness of joy. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation and gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us, together as we say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And may the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Our time of worship today, pause and reflection, has come to its close. Thank you for joining us for Midday with Gray. Hope to see you tomorrow. Blessings.